I've been trying to figure out what gives people's lives meaning. And if you look at it technically, in order to have any positive meaning in your life, you have to have identified a goal and you have to be working towards it. And there is a technical reason for that. And the technical reason, as far as I can tell, is that the circuitry that produces the kind of positive emotion that people really like is only activated when you're proceeding towards a goal that you value. And so that means that if you don't have a goal that you value, you can't have any positive emotion. So technically, that's the incentive reward system. And it's the underlying circuitry is dopaminergic. And when that circuitry is activated, then it's part of the exploratory circuit. It makes you, it gives you the sense of being actively engaged in something worthwhile. You know, you, you tend to think of positive emotion as something produced by reward. But there's two kinds of positive emotion. One is the reward that's associated with satiation. And that's consumatory reward, and that's the reward you get when you're hungry and you eat. But the thing about eating when you're hungry is that it destroys the framework within which you were operating. Right? It's time to eat. Well, you eat, and then that framework's no longer relevant. So the consumatory reward eliminates the value framework. And then you're stuck with, well, what are you going to do next? And so the consumatory reward has with it its own problems. But the incentive reward is constantly what keeps you moving forward. And incentive reward, because it's dopaminergic, also is analgesic, literally analgesic. So if you're in pain, you take opiates and that, that will cut the pain, but so will psychomotor stimulants like cocaine or amphetamines. And so it's literally the case that if you're engaged in something that's engaging and you're working towards a goal, that you're going to feel less pain. And you can see this happening with athletes who, you know, they'll break their thumb or something, or maybe sometimes even their ankle, and they'll keep playing the game. Of course, afterwards, they're suffering like mad, but the fact that they're so filled with goal-directed enthusiasm means that well, the pain systems are, in some sense, shut off. So that's an interesting thing, because what it suggests, I mean, then you could imagine, I might say, well, how happy are you that you've made a certain amount of progress? And if you think about it, what you'd say is, well, it depends on how much progress and in relationship to what. So, hypothetically, you're going to be happier if you've made quite a bit of progress towards a really important goal. And then you have to think through what it means for a goal to be really important, because that's not obvious. Now, you could say, you're in this class and you're listening to some information, and maybe there's two reasons for that. You might find the information interesting per se, but let's forget about that for a minute. You need to listen to the information so that you can do well on the assignment, so that you can do well in the class. You need to do well in your classes so that you can finish up your degree. You need to finish up your degree so that you can find your place in the world. You need to do that so that you're financially stable and maybe you can start a family and have a life and that's all part of being a good person, something like that. And so, that's a hierarchy of goals and you might say that being a good person would be the thing however vaguely thought through, that's at the top of that hierarchy. And then, when you're doing things that serve the, that ultimate purpose, then you're going to find those more meaningful, and that meaning is actually produced as a consequence of the engagement of this exploratory circuit that's nested right down in your hypothalamus. It's really, really old. It's as old as thirst, and it's as old as hunger. It's really an old system. And so, you want to have that thing activated. It might be that the sense of meaning that life can provide to you is proportionate to the amount of responsibility you decide to take on. That would be very strange if it was the case, you know, because responsibility, of course, is a kind of weight, obviously. And it's difficult to take on responsibility. But if any positive emotion that you feel, and your control of anxiety, and the control over pain, is dependent on the activation of these systems that watch you move towards a desired goal, then the more complete and weighty the goal is, the more kick there's going to be in the observation that you're moving towards it. And I, you know, you kind of already know this because you'll, you'll have observed in your own life that when you're engaged in something that you believe in, that the time passes properly. You know, you can see this even if you're, maybe you're reading a paper and it's actually related in some intelligible manner to something that you want to learn.
So even though it's difficult, you get engaged in it, you can remember it better, you can process it better, and you're not so likely to fall asleep, and you're not so likely to want to find distractions, all of that, you can get into it. And it would be very interesting if that was proportionate to the degree of responsibility that you're willing to shoulder, and I, I think you can make a strong case for that. I've also often wondered, imagine you could offer people a choice. Here's the choice, you could say, well, your life isn't meaningful, the nihilists have got it right, there's no meaning in your life. And because of that, there's no reason for you to accept any responsibility. So, you can live a responsibility-free life, and maybe one of impulsive pleasure-seeking, but a responsibility-free life, but the price you pay is that it doesn't get to be meaningful. Or you could say to someone, no, we're going to do the opposite, we're going to say, you can live a meaningful life, but it's only going to be as meaningful as the amount of responsibility that you're willing to bear. And then you might say, well, what would people choose? Because everybody also always makes noises about wanting to have a meaningful life. But if the price you pay for that is the adoption of responsibility, then it's not so obvious that people would choose meaning over, you know, over pointless pursuits. If the benefit they got for choosing the pointless pursuits was that they really didn't have to care about anything they ever did. There's no responsibility. When you go from a bad place to a better place, you go to a worse place first. It's a great thing to know, because it also tells you why you might be unwilling to take the next step. You know, you're aiming up, but to, in order to aim up, you have to let go of something you already have. And then that'll put you into a state of chaos. And unless you're willing to undergo that intermediary state of chaos, and you might not recover from it, you're not going to get to the next level. Many of you, I presume, have seen Breaking Bad. You have this ordinary high school teacher who really thinks that he's an ax, and his family as well. You know, like your typical persona, roughly speaking. He's just a normal guy. But part of the reason that he's a normal guy is because he actually hasn't been put in abnormal circumstances, and then all of a sudden he is. And he has a genuine moral conundrum, right? He's gonna die of lung cancer and his, he has a has son who's got a lot of health problems, and he's terrified that, that he's going to leave his wife and his child behind with nothing. And so he decides to do something that temporarily that he regards as, what he would normally regard as reprehensible, and of course he just gets tangled up in that. But then as the story unfolds, you see that there's it's more complicated because it's not that he was just innocent good guy and he decided to turn bad, he's also very resentful and angry. And it's partly because he's a bit of a pushover at the beginning, or maybe more than a bit of a pushover. And also that he didn't really fulfill his own potential, and that, you know, he, he had friends who walked down the entrepreneurial path, and maybe they weren't quite fair to him, but whatever, he ends up not very successful as a high school teacher, so he's really angry about that. And so there's more motivation for him opening up the door to to the terrible elements of his personality than just the fact that he's got good motivations to do so, and that, that unfolds, you know, and so you see the warps and twists in his resentful character increasingly manifest themselves as he walks down this road to really total brutality. So it's one step at a time, and that's the thing, is that you end up in very bad places one step at a time, so you've got to watch those steps. Sometimes you take a leap forward and you learn some things, but you can't catalyze a new identity, so you try to go back and hide in your old identity. And that actually doesn't work, because, well, you, things have changed and you've learned something and that isn't who you are anymore. And so it's like, you have to cut part, parts of yourself off in a destructive manner to fit back into the person that you were. One of the times in your life when you actually realize that you're an individual is when you'll go and ask your parents something and you realize they actually don't know any more about what you should do than you do. And that sucks. And that's partly why people are often willing to maintain a tyrant-slave relationship with their father. It's like, on the one hand, you have to be inferior in a relationship like that. You know, you've always got the judge watching you. But on the other hand, there's always someone who knows what to do. There's always someone standing between you and the unknown that you can go ask, what should I do? Well, at some point you'll realize that the reason you can't ask that anymore is because they actually don't know any more than you do. And then that's a pain, like that, that is a symbolic death. That's also when you establish a more 
individual relationship with your parents, it's at that point that you could conceivably start taking care of them instead of the reverse. And that's a time that should come. But you have to let that image of perfection go. And that exposes you.